Hey guys, it's Carson Miller Tech here, back with another video, and if you found this video because you're having issues getting internet to a faraway location, maybe your neighbor has internet and you don't and you're looking to get internet, or vice versa, or maybe you just have a building on your property that you're looking to get internet into, maybe just a shed or something like that. If this sounds like you, you found the right video, because in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get internet to a faraway location using the Cambium Bridge in a Box set. And this includes two Force 180s inside of it that are pre-configured, so it makes it super easy for people who don't really know too much about internet connectivity and just networking in general. And you just wanna get two locations connected. So with this, and this can actually output a signal up to 10 miles. So if you have something that is really far away and you need to get internet to, this may be your solution. Without saying too much more, I do wanna say just here up front that Cambium did send me this product for free, but they're not telling me to say anything in this video, so all opinions are my own. But with that being said, let's get right into the unboxing so then we can get this out and then show you how it works because I wanna to get to testing this out. I haven't had a chance to do so yet. So let's get right into the unboxing. So here we go. I don't wanna make this too long because the unboxing really isn't the most important part, but just getting right into the unboxing here, I do want to mention here on the front, a couple things that I already talked about with that 10 mile range, and also it can have a maximum of 200 megabits per second throughput. So if you are looking for a higher throughput than that, this may not be it for you, but even 200 megabits per second is pretty decent. And on the back here, it gives a little bit more information about that whole 10 mile thing. So as you can see, I'm sure this was under lab conditions. They were able to get 11.4 miles away and still have 20 megabits per second throughput. So that's pretty decent. And at even just one mile, you'll have 200 megabits per second, that full speed. So you should be good even at the furthest distances to still have quite a bit of speed going through these devices. It does say a little bit more here, but I don't want to get too much into that. So let's get right into the box. You'll see two identical boxes. Let's get those out. So inside of here, these are exactly identical. So I'm not going to be opening both of these, but I'll just open one right here to show you what's inside. So here on top, you will find the device itself, pretty light and not too giant either. Here in the bottom, you will find a PoE injector. This isn't the smallest one ever, but it's also not the biggest one ever either. It's a lot longer than most, but there you go, there's that. The cable to plug in the PoE injector. The mount, this allows you to mount onto a pull. This of course will go through here and that will allow you to tighten this to a pull. So that is pretty much it here inside this box. Again, like I said, this box is exactly identical, so I'm not gonna be opening that up. But if you wanna see everything out at once, here you go. So here you go, now that everything is laid out, it's pretty easy to see that these are exactly identical. The only problem that I do have with them being exactly identical is that out of the box, you don't really know which of these is the base station. So the one that puts out the signal and which one is the receiving one. So that is a bit of an issue, but that is pretty easy to figure out as soon as you plug these in. So with that being said, Let's get to plugging these in and showing you its performance. So now before I truly get into showing you installing this, I do need to mention that this isn't exactly as plug and play as it claims inside the box. At least it wasn't for me. So when setting this up, it has a default IP address of 192.168.0.1 or .0.2, depending on if you have the subscriber module or the access point. So unless you're connecting this to a network that has that same subnet of IP addresses, you are going to have to go into the settings and change this. But if you are connecting this to a network that has that same subnet range, then you won't have to worry about this part of the video. But if you do need to go and change it, then I'm gonna be showing you how to do so right now. So to do this, you're just gonna need to plug your computer into one of the Force 180s via Ethernet, and we need to make sure that your computer can recognize this. So you're going to have to go into your network settings on your computer, whether that be on Windows or Mac OS, but in this case of a Mac. Once you're there, you're going to need to change the configure IPv4 from using DHCP to manually and then change your IP address from whatever it was on your original network to something in the 192.168.0 spectrum. I just changed it to .4 for me just to keep it simple. But after that, you're gonna have to change the subnet mask to 0.0.0.0 
and then save and proceed to open up a browser and type in the IP address of 192.168.0.1 or .2, depending on which device, once again, that you're connected to. And then log in using the username and password admin and admin. After that, you're gonna have to click on the quick start menu and then down where it says IP address, type in an IP address that resides on your IP address subnet of your network. In my case, that's 10.0.0. something. So I changed these to 10.0.0.90 and .91, depending on which of the devices I was changing. And then after that, set the subnet mask to 255.255.255.0 and your gateway as the IP address of your router. After changing that on both of the access point and the subscriber module, make sure you click save up in the top right of the browser. And then after that, after these have restarted, you are pretty much set to go and actually use these as a bridge. So then after they are restarted, you can get to installing them, which I'm going to do right now. So mounting is pretty easy with this hose clamp here. You just tighten it up. I used a drill to make it a little bit faster. But once you do that, you have a little bit of mobility with this. Of course, you can spin it around your mounting point or you can use this on the side and loosen this a bit. And then that allows you to adjust up and down wise. But I have found that this right here actually sucks a ton. Like, I don't know why they made it the way they did you basically have to unscrew it all the way to the point where the bolt almost comes undone, which is bad because when you're up, like where I am right now, up on a roof, you don't want to lose your pieces. So having to unscrew it so much is really bad. And I really think they should change their design of how you have to move that because even all the way unscrewed as it is right now, it's really hard to move it. So that's pretty sketchy and I don't know how to feel about this still, but I am aiming right now for over there for my fake test site there, acting as if that is like a separate building on my lawn. So anyways, I have this installed up here, put it all together and aiming it over there. I would say it's lined up pretty well. There is of course this indicator over here, which is pretty convenient, but not so convenient in a bright daylight setting environment because you can barely see it right now so um i can see it and two of the lights are lit up right now so that's good but now it is time to get down to the receiving point let's see how it works this is about the closest you can get to a demonstration of this so i installed it over here i just want to show you again here's the sub module and also in the inside here, you can see that I put network out. And on the other one over there up on the roof, I put network in because the input of the network goes into that, the output goes to this. So that's why that's there. Going down here to the PoE injector, you're gonna wanna go and make sure that you plug in an ethernet cord to the gigabit data. And then you take the other end of this cable and this is the end here that you can go and plug your computer, router, whatever it may be. In this case, it's just a adapter that goes into my computer because of course my computer does not have an ethernet jack. So as soon as you give it a moment, it should connect to your computer and get a DHCP address like pretty quickly. Um, I just wanna show you that I do have Wi-Fi turned off, so I'm not going through Wi-Fi right now and getting internet through that or something, but I am getting it through that USB LAN port. But with that being said, if you run a speed test here, I just wanna do this really quick and show you comparison between the regular speed that I get inside and to now. As you can see, the ping time is a little bit higher than inside usually is directly through our Wi-Fi or even a direct connection to our network, but the download speed and upload speed is relatively the same, but of course these tests do vary by a little bit each time you take them, so just take it by a little bit of a grain of salt to know how well this actually performs. But from what I see, it is working quite well. So if you're looking for something for this type of application where you're getting internet into another building, this should work great. Um, this is of course still a little bit of a janky setup here, but it is a pretty accurate representation of I feel how most people would use this. This is of course direct line of sight and I would say the distance is roughly, I'd say 75 to 100 feet. So the distance isn't too terribly far apart, but if you would be having this in a longer distance, I wanna see how that performs. So right now, I'm gonna go move the antenna and then I'm gonna go driving away to see how far 
we can go before I get dropped out signal. Before I did say that I was going to be going and driving as far away as I could, I decided that's probably not the best idea considering I don't have like a direct path that I can go to and that would make it a little bit more difficult than it needs to be. So where I'm going right now is a location that is one mile away from the access point and we will see how the connection is from there. It should be fine, but I just want to test it out long range. Um, I'll be there very soon, so uh, once I get there, I'll set everything up and then you'll see how it looks. Here we go, I am now all set up. Basically how I have this set up right now is I have a C-stand, as you can see, and this is just mounted to the top of that because why not? Basically, that is connected then into my computer right here, as you would expect, and that's just plugged in through the Ethernet adapter, the same one that I used before, and then it's just getting power from my vehicle, so there's that. Something I wanted to show you here on the laptop is the fact that I am not actually one mile away. I thought that I was going to be about a mile away. However, where I am currently on the map, it is showing me only about 0.8 of a mile, so I'm not entirely where I was hoping I would be, but where I am right now, there is a perfect downlink on the screen. It's showing me that it has 100% link quality uplink and 100% link capacity uplink. So running a quick speed test here on the computer as I did before when I was running the test earlier, this is reaching full speeds. I actually already ran one, but I'm gonna run a second one now just to show you what it's at. The ping is actually lower than what it was yesterday. So I think that might have to do with the fact that Either it's a different server, it could be that, or it could be the fact that I was so close and I didn't actually turn down the uplink distance. So it's set at default of three miles, but you should really just put that down to the lowest distance that you have between your subscriber modules. So if you have numerous of these, you wanna put it to the furthest module but no further than that. That could have been what caused the issue with so much ping, but as you can see after running this test, I'm getting 17 megabits per second download speed and almost four megabits per second upload speed. So that's actually almost better than what I usually get at my house. So that is doing pretty great. And I would have to say with how simple it was for me to set this up, literally all I did was I sat it there and moved it just a little bit, like this is not even lined up perfectly right now. Somehow I have 100% quality uplink. Something interesting that I can do here though with these is if I go to the tools and go to E-Align, it will show the DBM level of the antennas. So if I set my camera down over here. Right now I'm just gonna move it to the left. And as you can see, it immediately drops quite low. If I move it back to center, I can get it to a really good DBM. Speed wise, this works great, even at this far distance. I wish I could test it even further, but I think this has a good point of, if you have direct line of sight and you're trying to get this far away, you should be fine. And even if you don't have complete direct line of sight, if you're through trees or something, you should be fine. So there you go, there's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. A couple more things that I do wanna say about this is again, with the whole plug and play thing, I wouldn't say that it is exactly as easy as it says, but it's not too difficult to go into your computer, change some things up. Since I showed you how to do it, it shouldn't be too difficult to change. And one more thing that I'd like to mention is again, it doesn't say which is which out of the box. I wish they would have it labeled or something. With that being said, everything else about this, I would have to say is absolutely amazing. After that IP address change was passed, everything else was smooth and overall it has performed really well. I haven't used this long term yet, so I can't say for certain how it is in the long term, but my WISP, which is wireless internet service provider, uses Cambium products and I have a Cambium dish up on our roof because that is how we get our internet to our home. So with that, I've really never had to reset it or restart it. So overall, I would have to say that this, although I haven't tested it long term, it more than likely will perform as the other products do as well. This is a pretty great device. So if you're looking for an easy way to set up a bridge between two places, this is definitely a great solution. I do gotta say that there are, of course, other solutions out there. I'm not just gonna push those aside because there are other options out there, but if you're just looking for something really quick and easy and reliable, 
I would suggest this. So anyways guys, that is it now for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to let me know by clicking that thumbs up button down below. If you have any questions at all, make sure to leave those down in the comments. I love responding to you guys' comments, but sometimes you guys just don't leave them. Also, if you'd like to see future videos from me, consider clicking that subscribe button down below. And if you'd like to see my last video, that should be right over there. And some random videos should be down there. Anyways, that is it for this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.